Amen. Why don't we all stand and give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Why don't we really love him right now? Thank you, King, for what you're doing right now. Yes, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Wow. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Amen. I feel the Holy Ghost. Oh, it feels so good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. And I'm just so thankful for what God is doing, what he's going to do. And I don't know about you, but I can't believe in this morning that God is going to move not only in my life, but in this church. And he's going to move in a mighty way. Amen. And I know God is able. I know he's willing to do it. All he needs is some willing vessels. And I believe we've got a lot of willing vessels in here tonight. Amen. And uh, if you would, get your Bibles and turn with me to Luke chapter 18. And we're going to be going to verse 1. Amen. Luke chapter 18, starting at verse 1. And I'll give you a moment to get there. Amen. Love this great church family. Y'all mean the world to us. And uh, man, it's just been so great being here. Amen. It's been such a joy. And uh, we're so glad for the time that we've had to spend with the church and have the time to just worship God together and be fed together. Amen. And I want to give double honor to your great pastor, Pastor Driscoll and Sister Driscoll. Amen. What a great pastor and pastor's wife. Amen. Y'all got the best. Y'all really did. I'm going to say it every time. Y'all got the best and we love them. And I'll tell you what, before we continue, I'll tell you something about Brother and Sister Driscoll. They love people. They really do. They love people. They genuinely love people. Amen. You find some people where they got the truth, but they really ain't got any love. And then you find people that got a lot of love, but they really ain't got any truth. But here at Sanctuary Ravelin, you've got somebody that's got love and they've got the truth. Amen. That's such a blessing. It's a blessing to have them in our lives. Amen. Luke chapter 18, starting in verse 1. And he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that man ought always to pray and not to faint, All right. saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Right. He would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, right. I will avenge her, yeah. lest by her continual coming she weary me. Oh, and the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him? Though he bear along with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Amen. Man, that gets me excited, that right there. Hallelujah. Amen. Why don't you lay your Bibles down beside you and just lift up your hands to God and give them some praise. Give them some worship. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in this place. God, I thank you for what I'm feeling right now. God, I thank you for ministering to every heart and every soul, every mind. God, oh, we find every bit of fear and temptation, every hindrance that would try to come against a saint of God right now. We lose freedom. We lose freedom right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, why don't you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? It just gives him a shout of victory. Oh, my Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. You may be seated this morning. Man, I just feel so good. I'm telling you, I feel good in the Holy Ghost. I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of the devil running about and tearing and destroying lives. 
that I'm sick of him having his way. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready to fight back. Amen. I said I'm ready to fight back against the enemy. And if it takes prayer and fasting, if it takes lifting up my hands and raising my voice, if it takes me getting out and witnessing, then that is what I'm going to do. Amen. I'm going to do whatever it takes for me to give the devil back what he's trying to give to me. Amen. I'll tell you, uh, last night we got in probably the latest we have. And, uh, man, it was just it was one thing after the other. It really was. I mean, it felt like the, the trip was, you know, like four or five hours longer. And it made no sense. I mean, it really did. And, uh, well, number one, you know, traffic happened. And we didn't move. I'm telling you, we didn't move for 30, 35 minutes. And on every side of us, people were fighting, saying words that shouldn't be said getting mad at each other. And I mean, we was just, it's not like anybody could do anything. You know, we just sit there. And you have people honking at each other like it's their fault, you know. But anyways, just looking for somebody to blame. You know, they was just looking for somebody to get angry at. And uh, there was even this one guy, he pulled up on the side. They, they, were, they were driving on the shoulder. And, um, and I'll tell you something fun. We drove by, there was this cop, and he had like 10 of them lined up on the shoulder, just handing out tickets, handing out tickets when they've been driving. Yeah, but uh, anyways, it was it was something else last night. But right as traffic was clearing up, I, I got a call, and uh, I didn't recognize the numbers from a number I didn't know, and uh, it was from a dear friend of ours that we had won to God, and we had won him to the Lord, I'd say probably about three or probably about four months ago now. And uh, we won him to the Lord at just the beginning of a revival that we were in. And we were driving down the road. And we've been driving for about 25 minutes. And it, it blew my mind because it was raining. All right. And there was this man, and he was walking down the, the shoulder of the road, just walking. Yeah. And it just started sprinkling. And you know, I, it came in my mind when I was passing him up. I need to turn around and pick him up. Yeah. And before I said anything, Sister Tolliver said, why don't you go ask him if he wants to come to church? Uh, why don't you go invite him? Yeah. I said, okay. You know, I, now I'm telling you, you know, I, I will not, this is me, I won't pick up somebody unless God tells me to. Right. Yeah. And I, I'm not going to pick up somebody on the, unless I feel the Holy Ghost to do it. Right. You know, but, um, man, we were driving by, and I just felt the Holy Ghost. We need a witness to this man and invite him. And I'm telling you what, we could not have picked up a nicer person. Picked up a person that was just so nice, and, man, he had been through it. I mean, he had really been through it. He'd been through storm after storm. And, you know, Pastor Driscoll, when he got in the car, the whole time he was talking, he was, man, he was, oh, what was me, you know, yeah, yeah. telling everything bad that had happened, talking about, you know, uh, the situation that was going on with a person close to him, right. and he, he just didn't like him anymore, you know, they, they, they done him wrong, and he, he didn't want anything to do with him, he was done, he was finished, and you know, when he came to church that morning, uh, as, as mad and upset as he was, and as disappointed as he was, when we asked him, you want to come to church? He said, yes. Yeah. Yes, I, I need to come to church. Yeah. Well, man, when he walked in, and, and I'm telling you, the, the message that I preached was the message God laid on my heart. And uh, it, it really, it wasn't even a convicted message. And, and he was, man, I walked down after the message had ended, and he was up there crying and weeping with his hands raised, and man, God filled him with the Holy Ghost, and then he wanted to get baptized in Jesus' name, and we baptized him, and I'll tell you what was the most amazing thing was to see how in one moment the Holy Ghost changed him. It changed his whole attitude about everything going on in his life. Let me tell you, nothing can help you, and nothing can change the situation that you're going through like God can. 
I said, nothing can help you. You may be going through something today and you wonder how you're going to get out of it. I'm telling you, God is the answer. God is the only one that can bring you through it. God is the only one that can sincerely help you. There's nothing else that's going to do what God can do. Somebody ought to give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He's going to help you. He's your provider. He's your way maker. If anybody can do it today, God can do it. And I watched him as he came out from that church and he came to the vehicle and we took him out to eat with the pastor. He was sitting across from me and he said, I, I, I can't explain it, Brother Tom. He said, I, I, it's like I'm a whole new person. He said, I've been baptized before. I, I, I've been preached to before. I've been to church after church before. But I've never felt what I felt today. He said, you know, when I came up out of that water, he said, when I went in the water, I was full of hate. I was full of bitterness. I was full of madness. I was just angry. He said, now when I came up, all I can think about is how much I love them. And he said, I'm not even thinking about how they done me wrong. Uh, it don't even bother me anymore what they've done to me. He said, all I can think about is the good thing. Yeah, and it's like God has blocked out how they've done me wrong. And I, I just think about how much I truly love them. Amen. And on that day, man, he was he was on a spiritual high. Yeah. God had touched him. He was in his right mind when he made this decision. Yeah. And I'm telling you what, every night in the revival, uh -huh. he, he was coming. Yeah. He was there. Yeah. Well, fast forward now. Last night I got a phone call from him. And you have to know the situation he's in. And uh, instead of, you know, kind of standing his ground and, and, and deciding, hey, you know, nothing's going nothing's gonna to pull me out. Nothing's going to wear me down. You know, he has been in such a rough situation. And uh, the family situation he's in, he has not been able to get to church. You know, and uh, that's that's what he tells me. And I'm telling you what, missing church is not good. Right. Missing church is not good. Right. I'm just going to say that. I'm telling you, the way I got out of church was by not coming to church. Right. You know, that's how I got out, right. was by not coming. And you know, and, and the difference between him and now, between those the last four months, is completely different. I saw how God completely changed them. I was full of faith, how everything was going to work out, everything was going to be okay. And I got a phone call last night, right as traffic was clearing up. And it was from a number in Mississippi that I didn't recognize. But when I answered, all I, it was breaking up. And all I heard was somebody crying, saying, Brother Tauber, weeping and crying, Brother Tauber. And I said, hello? And I realized it was him. I said, hey, man, can you hear me? And then it clicked. Then he called back. It was like the, the enemy was fighting me. I mean, that phone oh, yeah. would not oh, yeah. come through. Well, finally, I got a hold of him. And all he was saying was, pray, 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 pray. Pray for me. And we started praying. And I asked him, I said, what's going on? He was crying and weeping. He was saying, I just can't continue anymore. He said, I just can't do it. He said, I, I can't do it anymore. And you can ask Sister Talbert. Man, I was, for over an hour, I, I was speaking faith. I was giving him a word from God. And all he could say each time, I'm tired. I'm tired. That's all he said. I'm tired. I'm worn out. I can't continue. And I tell him, well, man, God, God's going to bring you through this. Uh, and he'd say, I, I can't continue anymore. Uh, I can't do it anymore. I, I don't want to live anymore. I don't want to do it. I just want to tell you how much I love you, how much I care about y'all, and how much hope y'all gave me. And I just wanted to tell you this. And I'm sorry I can't continue. And I was telling the man, listen, God is going to bring you through this. This is not the answer. But every time you just say, I'm tired. I'm tired. He had been completely 
in the last four months, I don't know what all has happened, but all I know is that the man I knew four months ago was completely different from this man. Something had happened. And what had been going on is the devil had been wearing at him, tearing him down, coming at him, throwing everything he can at him. And all he could think about in that moment is I'm tired. All he could focus on is the trials and tribulations he's going through. All he could think about is the hurt he's been through. And I told him, I told him, I said, when you came to church and when you got the Holy Ghost and when you said, I want to be baptized in Jesus' name, uh-huh. you was in your right mind. Yeah. Yeah. When you said that, you was in your right mind. Right. You knew exactly what you were saying. And I told him, but right now, you are not in your right mind. Amen. And you don't need to make any decisions no. right now. You don't need to do anything crazy right now. And can I tell you today that it don't matter how much you've been through, how much you've been hurt, how much you've been attacked. You need to remember that the day you decided to live for God, the day you decided to come to church, the day that God filled you with the Holy Ghost, the day you decided to be baptized in Jesus' name was the day that you were in your right mind. You knew exactly what you were doing. You knew exactly what was the right choice. You knew exactly where you needed to be. And if we're not careful, then the devil will work on us and he will wear us down to where we feel like we can't even do anything else but think about how tired we are. And I spent over an hour talking to him and eventually he just he hung up. And I haven't heard from him. I don't know what happened. I, I'm believing nothing crazy's happened. Because he did call me and he talked with me for an hour. And I'm believing that he called for somebody to just give him hope. Right. Talk him out right. of it. Right. You know, I don't believe, I don't feel that. I don't feel that he's done anything. Right. But I'm believing that he's going to be okay. Yeah. But I'm telling you that that man that I know four months ago when he got the Holy Ghost, he was a new man. All right. But in four months... The devil had wore him down and had him on the brink of suicide. And what am I telling you this morning? I'm telling you that the last thing we need to do is to allow the devil to wear us down. We don't need to let the devil tear us up. We don't need him to let him get us tired. We don't need to let him get us in a place where all we can think about is what's going wrong in our life, what's going bad in our life. What we need to do is get faith and start speaking faith and say everything's going to be okay. God's going to bring me through it. God's going to help me. God's going to save my family. God's going to help me. Somebody needs to talk to God in here right now. You need to stop letting the devil beat you up. You need to stop letting the devil tear you down. And you need to start learning how to worship God. Lift up your voice and say, I know that God's going to help me. I know God's going to bring me through. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. And, And then... At the same time this morning, I wake up to a family member. Same deal. Can't do nothing but tell me about what's going wrong. Uh Can't do nothing but talk about how horrible things are. And hey, hey, they've had it horrible. Uh Things have been terrible. But you know what? If we all decided to talk about what's going wrong in our lives, we'd be here all day. Uh And by the time of it, I'm sure most of us would feel like jumping off a cliff. Once we all get done talking about what's going wrong. Amen. There's a difference between things going wrong and just deciding to talk about it all day. Amen. You know what the key to being happy is and the key to to living for God is? Is to have faith. Is to know that no matter what's going on, no matter what the devil tries to do, no matter how much he throws at you, you still have faith and you know that God is still God and he's still capable and he's still able to do whatever he wants to do. Amen. And I'm telling you that for a fact, what the devil was trying to do right now 
He's trying to wear the saints down. He's trying to wear the church down. He's trying to wear us out. He's trying to drain you during the week. He's trying to fight you hard in the week. So when you get to church, when you sit here this morning, when you come tonight, and when you get here, all you can say and think about is I'm tired. And all you can think about is how hard the week's been. I don't know about you, but during this revival, I've been fought. I've been attacked. I'm telling you, I've never been fought in a revival like I have in this one. Yes, and it's very clear and evident yeah. that the devil's doing everything he can yeah. to wear you out. Yeah. He's doing everything he can yeah. to drain you. Jesus. But I'm telling you right now, what I'm trying to tell you is the answer is not going to be found in us sitting down and pouting. The answer is not going to be found in us being weary and feeling lonely and speaking doubt and speaking worry. But the answer is going to be found in when we lift up our voice and when we lift up our hands is when we stand up to our feet, when we put some works behind our faith, when even though we've been through hell and back, even though when we've been through a tough week, even though the devil's done everything he can to destroy us and tear us down, we still lift up our voice and we still praise God. We let the devil know that he's not going to be able to do anything to pull us away. He's not going to be able to do anything to tear us down. I wonder if anybody right now can lift up your voice and you can let the devil know that he's not going to pull you out and he's not going to tear you down. That you know God's still able. That you know that God's going to do it. thing he was was worried about him. And uh, we see that this judge was somebody that couldn't care less about others. And he couldn't care less about anything other than himself. And uh, we see that this widow, though she was rejected time and time again by this old evil judge, though every time she came, he turned her down. She had it in her mind that she was not going to stop till she got what she was seeking. And she kept coming. She kept coming. This widow came back day after day until she wore that old evil judge down. She kept coming back until she wore the corruption down. She kept coming back until she got a good verdict. Until she got the justice that she needed. And I'm just wondering in here this morning. I woke up this morning reading this and wondering. Are we doing what she did? Uh, are we following the advice of the parable? Are we really activating what God is trying to tell us here? I wonder today if whenever we haven't gotten what we feel we need. Or whenever we know that God's wanting to do something for us. Or whenever the enemy is coming after our home and coming after our family. I wonder if we're fighting back and we're wearing them down. If we're going to the throne room of heaven time and time again. Praying and praying and praying until something happens. Or if we quit 
one time when we've crossed our arms and we've said, well, it's not going to happen. If we really prayed, if we really fasted, if we really seeked God, I wonder today if we really even tried to get a hold of Him. Uh, how many times have we prayed and barely even prayed? We said, well, I'll pray. Hopefully it will happen. Hopefully it will come forth and we'll see it go down. Well, I'm going to tell you right now that what the enemy is going to do when you come and you pray, he's going to be like that old evil judge. And while you're crying out to God, he's going to tell you, there's nothing here for you. You're not going to get what you're seeking. You're not going to get what you're looking for. And the whole time you're crying out to God, you hear a voice in the back of your head. Do you really think God's going to do it? Do you really think God's going to help your family? Do you really think God's going to help you financially? you think God's going to help you? You've prayed before, and it's never happened. You've prayed before, and you still haven't seen it come forth. He'll wear you down. He'll do everything he can to tear your faith apart. Yes, sir. He'll do everything he can to make you feel like there's no need in even praying anymore. Right. Uh, all you do is just lift up your hands and tell God you love him. Ask God to forgive you of your sins, but you don't even ask for anything. Anymore. You don't even come to God and pour your heart out and tell him what you need. The, the pain and the sufferings you're going through. Because the enemy has convinced you that there's no need to do it. Because nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to come from it. If you're worn down today, if you're tired, then I'm going to tell you the answer is not to stop living for God. The answer is to live for God more than you ever have before. Uh, some of us need to get to where we decide instead of letting the devil wear us down, instead of letting the devil tear us up, that we're going to wear the devil down. That we're going to wear the devil out. You know how you're going to wear the devil out today? You know how you're going to tear him down today? It's not going to be by sitting by and listening to what he has to say. But it's going to be by getting up and worshiping God. It's going to be by putting words behind your faith. By lifting up your voice. By letting the devil know that God is still with you. I wonder this morning if anybody is really want to wear the devil down. If anybody's really want the devil to know that he's already lost, that he might as well stop what he's doing because God has already won. I wonder today if anybody has really got a praise in their heart, if they've really got some worship in them that they can lift up to God, that they can lift up in victory. Oh, Hallelujah. Oh, give the Lord a hand clap of praise in him. Oh, being lukewarm is not the answer. Being lukewarm is not the answer. The answer is going to be found in being filled with the Holy Ghost. The answer is going to be found in being at an altar and lifting up the name of God. The answer is going to be found in worshiping Him. If you're worn out and you're tired today, the answer is not to stop. The answer is not to quit. The answer is to worship God more than you ever had before. In the name of Jesus. Woo! Somebody ought to lift their voice up to him. And say, God, I thank you for doing it. God, I know you can do it, Lord. Hey, hallelujah. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Can we see that? After time and time again of going to this old judge, right. she was seeking the verdict that she was looking for. Yeah. He hadn't made up in his mind. He wasn't giving her one. Uh, she kept coming. She kept making her way to see him and ended up driving him crazy. Uh, he finally said, you know what? I'm going to give it to her just so she will leave me alone. Good. Just so she will quiet down and let me have some peace Amen. for a little bit. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried 
day and night yes. unto him, yes. Yes. though he bear along with them. Right. What God is saying is, if your enemies will hear you, if the unjust can hear you speak, right. if when you talk to the enemies and the demons can hear you talk, do you really think that I can't hear you? Do you really think that I don't hear what you're saying? Can I tell you right now that when you pray, when you lift up your voice, when you cry out to God, that it's not going up to the ceiling, but it's going to the throne room of heaven. That when you speak and you say something and you cry out to God, that God does hear you. I said God does hear your prayers. Aren't you glad today that not only are you a servant of God, but you're a servant of God that is worried about you. You're a servant of God that wants to hear what you've got to say. He wants to hear what's going on. He wants to know what you need in your life. We're not just servant of God, but we're servant of God that is worried about us. And in verse 8 he says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Yeah. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Amen. Can I tell you that when God is moving, when he's coming forth on your prayers, when you lift up your voice, the last thing you need is an image of God just sitting down and not doing anything. There's some people in here and you've lifted up your voice and you've cried and you've told God what you need them to do and it's been a few weeks later or a few months later and you've wondered if God is even doing it or if God's even going to do it. But I'm going to tell you right now that the moment you lift up a prayer, the moment you open your mouth and you speak to God, the moment you pour your heart out to him, he's not just worried about it, but he's doing everything he can to get it done. He's going to do everything and he's going to get it done as fast as he can. The last thing we need is doubt to get in our prayer, doubt to get in our worship, but we need faith in here right now that'll say not only is God going to do it, but he's going to do it faster than I thought he was. Not only is God going to do it, but he's going to do it just in time. Ooh, hallelujah. Amen, amen. You may be seated. I'll close it soon. And I'm telling you, I know for a fact that God hears the prayers of his people. And I know he does. And I'm telling you, I know for a fact that he does time after, after again. Story after story. Uh, even, even with my beautiful wife, Sister Talbert. Amen. I remember just a week before we met, I had cried and I prayed. And I told God, Lord, if you want me to be a ministry like I am, if you want me to be full-time in ministry, then I need my wife. I just, I poured my heart out to him. I'm telling you, that was, I mean, that was one of the most just heart to heart pouring out to God prayer means I had. And I told him, God, if, if you want me to do this, Lord, I, I, I need my wife. You know, I do. I need my wife. And what do you know, a week later, <laughs> me and her saw each other, and she just had to have me. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. I was, I, I, she was there the night when I was preaching. Amen. And I'm guessing that was the best message I ever preached. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because just, hey, and you know, you know what? I'm going to say this. I'm not, I know I'm getting off subject, but it's okay. I said, that night, she's going to get mad at me for this. But we were, I'm telling you, that whole, that whole service, I didn't even look. I, the Holy Ghost told me, play cool. So, you know, it was after service, and I just walked on by. And, and, and I, I was thinking, Jesus, are you sure? Is, is this supposed to be my wife? You don't want me to say, play it cool, play it cool. Okay, Jesus. So, I, the Holy Ghost telling me, just play cool. Man, sure enough, I left that service. About an hour later, I got a message on Facebook. Hey there. Hey. It's like, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And it was a done deal. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But God, 
And I know it's not a big deal to most, but I'm telling you what, God knew I needed my wife. Amen. Amen. When I just open up my mouth and I told him, God, I need this. God, I, I sincerely need this in my life. God came through. Right. Amen. And when you lift up your voice and you sincerely tell God that you need him to do something in your life, God wants to see you happy. Yes, yes. God wants to see you full of joy. God wants to see you doing good in your life. Yeah. And if it's something that's in his will, then he will do it. Right. Amen. Yes, but what really gets a hold of me in verse 8 is after all this, after it tells us about how he's listening to our prayers, and he wants to answer our prayers, and not only is he answering them, but he's doing it fast, he's doing it speedily. But then he says, Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Shall he find faith on the earth? I want to ask today, if God was to walk in here right now, if he was walk, to walk through these pews, would he find faith? If he was to walk through these pews and to look at each and every heart, would he find faith? When he finds somebody that's been torn down by the enemy, that's been worn down and attacked left and right, and has decided to not do anything and not do anything for God and not put any works behind their faith, only find somebody that's full of faith, even though they've been through the fire, even though they've been hurt, he's going to find somebody that's full of faith, and instead of letting the devil tear them down, they made up their mind that they're going to give the devil right back what he's gave to them. I don't know about you this morning, but I want to give the devil a headache. I want to give the devil an anxiety attack. I want to give the devil what he's gave me. I want to give him what he's put me through and the way you're going to do it if you really want to get payback on the devil today if you really want to get payback on him the way you're going to do it is by worshiping God it's by living for God and letting the devil know even though he's put you through all this this week you're still going to worship God and you're still going to live for him I wonder if anybody's got faith in here right now you know how you show your faith you show it with works you show it by worshiping God you show it by stepping out from behind your pew you show it by lifting your voice you show it by worshiping him he Somebody that's a worshiper. Will he find somebody that's still living for him? He yoko sanda Oh, he kanda yoko Oh, he ama yoko sanda yata ha. Oh, I'll tell you what somebody ought to do right now. Somebody ought to come up to this altar and you ought to wear the devil down. You ought to tear the devil down right now. You 